you are welcome to the next section. Link to the previous section will be up here and also in the description below. Now let's consider the other approach. This approach involves using Google OAuth. Now Google OAuth makes it possible for applications to communicate without revealing any passwords. Instead, it makes use of client IDs and tokens. So in our code, everything but the transporter will stay the same. So we'll create the transporter for this approach. So I'll just copy and paste this one. Now the service will stay the same and inside the auth we'll have the user but we don't need the password. So in place of the password, we need a few more properties. We need a client ID, a client secret, a refresh token and also an access token. For these values, we'll generate them and store them in our .env file. So to generate them, let's head to the Google Cloud Console and log in with our Gmail account. Now you have to make sure that you are logged in into the right account. Now you click on the drop down arrow here and create a new project. You can call your project anything you want. You have to make sure that you select the project once it is done creating. Now we visit credentials. You will find that under API and services. Once we are here, we need to configure the consent screen. Our user will be external. Now we provide some details again. We we'll leave the other things blank and provide the developer contact. Once we are done, we click on save and continue. For the scopes, we can skip that. Now for the test user, we will add our Gmail account. For this setup, if you don't add a test user, you will not be able to continue with the process. Now we save and continue. Once we are satisfied, we go back to the dashboard. In the left panel, we click on credentials once again. Now we create credentials. It will be an OAuth client ID. The application type will be a web application. I will maintain the name and over here, you have to add a redirect URI. Now for this, we'll make use of the Google Earth Playground. So we visit the playground and copy the link. We can remove the last forest slash. Now we can click on create. Now we are provided with the client ID and the client secret. So we copy this and add it to our code. Remember, you have to follow the steps to create your own client ID and client secret. Once the video goes live, these keys will not be working again. So first copy the client ID. Now back in the code editor, we go to the .env file and create another variable. We will call it auth client ID. And we'll paste the value here. Now we we'll need a client secret too. So head to the browser and copy the value. Now once we are done, we need to generate the other values. So we visit the playground that we opened. And over here, we click on the configuration. We keep all the configurations here and check this box. 
Now we we'll paste our values here. First will be the client ID. Once we are done, we come to the left side here and we look for Gmail API. Under Gmail API, we select the first link. Once we've done that, we click on Authorize APIs. Now we have to log in. We click on Allow. And we click on Allow again. Now over here, we click on Exchange Authorization Code for Tokens. Now it has vanished, but we can click on Step 2 to see them again. So over here, we are provided with a refresh token and an access token. But for Node Mailer, if you have a refresh token, you don't need the access token. So we can just copy the refresh token and we take it back to our code editor. Now we create another variable and call it auth refresh token. And we paste the values here. So now inside the server.js file, we refer to these values. Now as stated here, the access token doesn't last long, it has passed in some few seconds, hence the need for the refresh token. So whenever the access token has passed, the refresh token is used to fetch a new access token. So ideally, the refresh token is not supposed to expire. However, the refresh token may stop working if it has not been used for 6 months, or once you change the password to your email account. Also, if your application is not in production, the token will expire in 7 days. You can find the status of your application on the consent screen. As you can see, my application is in testing. So I wanted to go around the refresh token expiry, so I published my application to production. So I did this but somehow, the refresh token found a way to expire in a few days. Maybe more information on how to prevent that will be available soon. So until then, if this approach will be problematic, you can stick to the initial approach using the email and login password. Also one thing to note is that if you delete your project from the console, your credentials will stop working as well. Now once we've set our credentials here, we can rename it and go ahead to use it. So I'll call this Transporter Pro. And replace the transporter here with transporter pro. Also inside the auth, we need to add a type which I forgot, so let's add it. Now once we add the type and go to the command line, we see that our server is running and the transporter is ready for the messages. So inside the send mail, we update the transporter. We make use of the transporter pro. Once we've done that, we can head to Postman and try to send the message again. Now sending, we see that this one goes through as well. So let's check our inbox once again. Refreshing our inbox, we see that we have a new message and it says demo email subject from Pro. And that's all for this section. We proceed in the next one. Please leave a like and subscribe for more to the point code.